I uh, <laughs> beg your pardon. <laughs> Can you direct me to Redstone? <laughs> that way. That way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again.
Give yourself up, Indio. Get going and leave the girl. It's your only chance. Indio, throw down your gun and come out with your hands in the air. You'll never get out. Come on down. You got me, Sheriff. I surrender. There's one thing that's certain. My company won't pay unless everything's cleared up. Well, what are your plans? I believe the third accomplice in the robbery was a bank employee. That's what Lloyds of London has sent me to make sure of. They sent you all the way across the ocean? I would certainly have liked someplace else much better. However, they sent me here. Should I believe you? Oh. I'm terribly sorry, Sheriff. I forgot my credentials. Here you are. Jonathan Pinkerton, claims investigator for Lloyd's of London. Mm-hmm. At your service. You do speak strangely, but not like a real Englishman. I've heard them. It's my guess you were born in the States. Yes, moved to England when I was 16. It's a pleasure to be able to drop the accent now and then. I'll need to talk to you again when the right time comes. Oh, where is there a good hotel in town? Whether it's good or otherwise, there's only one within a hundred mile radius. Not much choice in the matter. Down the street. Thank you. All right, and if you don't care for the hotel, be sure and tell me, huh? Come on. <coughs> I, I, sorry. I'm really very sorry indeed. I, I wasn't looking. So sorry. given up on you. Where were you? It's been two days now. Everything's perfect. Don't worry. Um, have you found out if any... You know what I mean. I've managed everything. You don't need to worry. 
Can I help you, sir? A quiet room, please. I'm tired now and I'd very much like to go to sleep. Of course. Please sign. Number 18, sir. That's done. Thank you. See you later. Sir. Uh. Has he talked yet? No, uh, not yet. Just keep on. Better talk, Jerry. I would if I were you. I don't care what I do to criminals like you. Come in. Thank you. It's terribly kind of you. I must say, however, I'd prefer some hot water to take my bath in. Tea is an important thing for you, Englishman. I know that. Your bath water will take 20 minutes, I guess. They're preparing it now. Thank you. You'll appreciate this tea. I spent over a year in London. My grandmother there taught me about tea. Now, they wouldn't send a man all the way from England, I suppose. Unless the reason was very important. Well, you could say it was sort of a prize vacation. Beg your pardon? Mm -hmm. A modest prize, a million dollars. That's enough. <laughs> Todd Brown, I catch you once more cheating in my saloon. I'll cut off your hands with my own personal life, understand? Throw it out. to drink it, there's a saloon in the next town. I'd like to speak to the manager. <laughs> Can I do anything for you? Oh, well. So you're the manager, are you? Yeah, sure. Well, Mr. Manager, I do admire the cut of your beard. Would you, would you mind telling me who your barber is? I could use him. Oh, Walt, next door. Thank you. Oh. 
Are you sure you can shave like that? It's nothing. Don't worry. I mean, are you just out of form? Or is this your first shave? <laughs> oh, Mr. London, it's a very long story. Uh, carry on. Yes, sir. Always at work, eh, Sheriff? Upholding the law isn't easy. I run around chasing cattle rustlers, mostly. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, by the way, speaking of cattle, where's Clinton's ranch? Very far out? That way. Keep going. Two miles or so. Thank you. <laughs> you a little later. What brings you out now? My husband was called by the county board for a meeting. He's going to stay out late. There's no meeting tonight? I thought as much. He seemed quite nervous, too. Has he made a decision? No, not yet. But you can leave that to me. That is why you had me marry him, isn't it? I've got to have that money, you know. I promise you'll get it. Mr. Clinton. Excuse me. Well, what is it? There's a man from London downstairs. He wants to speak to you. Better show him in, then. It's the man I was expecting. Go back to the saloon. I'll tell you what happens later. Nice to see you. I'm sorry I didn't mean to keep you waiting for so long. Please, have a seat. Can I get you something to drink? A scotch, thank you. I've been expecting you for some time now. I gather since you're finally here, my proposal for exportation has been accepted. One scotch. Well, it's a big relief, I must say. Thank you. I don't mind admitting I've had my problems in the last little while, but what's business except a series of risks, huh? <laughs> But now things are looking up. No more worries. Now let's talk business. I'll be ready with 3,000 prime steers by April. In terms of money, the usual. Half in advance and half in delivery. Is that all right? 3,000 head of cattle. You really do have a large business. 
But I think I'd better introduce myself. My name is Jonathan Pinkerton and I work for Lloyd's of London. The reason I'm here is to investigate a robbery that took place some time ago in River Falls. It seems two of the bandits are dead, but there was a third man. My company will have to pay a very large sum if I don't find out who he is. I must say, I'm sorry I'm not the person you were waiting for. So am I. Well, it's not important. Only would you be so kind as to explain how I'm connected with your search for this miscreant? Don't worry. You understand I must make inquiries. And an important man like you, Mr. Clinton could help me very much indeed. Help, eh? I'm curious how. I'm looking for a man who came to this town just recently, sir. Oh, well, I've been here for two years. But uh, allow me to assure you, uh, was it? Pinkerton. Pinkerton, yes. I assure you I'm not one to rob banks. If you don't mind, I'll come back to see you. However, I must mention to you but I didn't say a word about a bank. Well, may I come and see you again, sir? Yes, whatever you want. Excuse me, isn't that the manager's room? <laughs> Listen, Mr. London, I'm the manager. I told you that already. And I don't wish to be disturbed. Come on. Wake up. <laughs> Look out. There's a herd of buffalo stand baiting. And just how do I come in? Well, sir, you could have something to do with it in many ways. As a suspect, for example. Or if you prefer, on the other hand, as my collaborator, indirect, of course. Perhaps I haven't explained really fully. My company has a fortune on its hands to pay. If an employee of that bank doesn't turn out guilty, it goes without saying that my company would prefer not to pay. Therefore, they're offering a reward. $200,000. To whomever might aid me in convicting this man by furnishing some proof. Two hundred thousand dollars. An incredible amount of money. You know, a person could do almost anything he wanted to. That's right. Like buy a ranch, for example. Or move away from this place forever. Whatever you chose, it would make life easier. Me? I'd go to the Mississippi, retire, get my old boat back in the water. Good idea. Why not? I'd have the time of my life, Mr. Pinkerton. All that money, all at once. But what do I have to do? I'm sorry, only I fail to understand. Help me find that man, the third bandit. He's disappeared now, but we're positive he worked at the bank. So you can help me. I have to prove he took part in that robbery. I must say it's a bit puzzling. Why choose me? I mean, why make me this proposition? There's nobody any better than you. All the leads point back toward this area. I'm absolutely convinced the man I'm looking for is here in town, or not too far away. You can help. 
But how? Come on. This place. I imagine the whole village and the whole countryside has managed to be on your books. Oh, quite a few, yes. Well, then? I imagine, Mr. London, that you are known as Mr. London in town, you realize. I imagine that I have no other choice, right? I would say so. Hmm. Quite a lot of money, indeed. Let's say I decided not to. It's all right. Don't worry about the boss. It appears to me there are more snakes flying through the air than flies or mosquitoes around here. You can go. Damn that Norton. Those damn snakes of his are getting to be a nightmare. Why? Our previous sheriff was found dead, killed by a snake bite. Oh, by the way, Mr. London, who knew that you were going to come here? Oh, at least the whole town, for instance. However, we can continue our conversation tomorrow. Ah, Mr. Pinkerton, I was looking for you. Your credentials. Thank you, Sheriff. I gather I can come by tomorrow for that information. Will that be all right? Get busy, Lewis. I want this business with the snakes cleared up quickly. Why, sure, Carl. I'll take care of it. What is this? Closed already? Yeah, it's those damn snakes, Mr. Lunn. That's what it is. <laughs> See you tomorrow, then. too far out of range. I'm going after him. Fine. Very good. So since you let him escape, since he almost murdered us, go find him. I want him. I want him back here, or I'll murder you instead. Understand? Camillo deceased. Violent death. That's very interesting, but what does it mean? It's simple, Mr. London. No matter what anyone says, yours truly is no charlatan at all. I'm a medical doctor, a zoologist too. The reason I'm in this town is because of a story much too long to relate here. As a good scientist, I always keep a careful record on my animals, their types and origins, and the results of my experiments. That file catalog contains the whole history on Camillo, the snake you put a slug through today. I've been doing research trying to work out an antidote using his poison, you see. And the snake that killed the sheriff, what was his name? Aunt Louise? Or something equally innocuous. Oh, everyone talks about it. <laughs> when Slim Culligan was found dead of a snake bite, I'd been five days in the desert because my research is there. This was sufficient in the minds of the jury, but not in the minds of the town. I believe you, but... Uh... Camillo, the one I killed. Were you in the desert when he surprised Carl? No. They stole Camillo from my studio. You must realize it's a grave accusation you're making. You've certainly chosen a dangerous occupation, haven't you? Yes, indeed. At any rate, what I've told you is the truth. And besides, with my, shall we say, renown, who in this town would have gone about the place saying that one of my snakes had been stolen or had escaped? I see. Well, then, who, in your opinion, could have taken it? An enemy of yours or an enemy of Carl's? Uh, by the way, is it true what I hear about the $200,000? It's true. 
You can consider me interested in this affair. In public, I'm generally avoided. But when they come here to me for help, now that's a different story. They talk. They tell me everything that's bothering them, my good fellow citizens. And it's possible, certainly, that someone might tell me something more, more to the point. It's an old story, a couple of years ago. A lot of people settled here about that very same time, Mr. London. They came here from every part of the country, north and south. Afternoon, everybody. Go check the receipts, will you, Emma? Sure. I need something to wake me up. You're supposed to wake everybody else up. Let me open my eyes first. None of that cold tea you give me when a gent's buying me a drink. I want the real stuff. Now that'll do just fine. Who's here? It's about time. We'd given up. Shall we get started? The usual stakes, huh? Yes. Why not? Will I do to start with? Yes. Mr. London, how about getting me something to drink, huh? Well, of course. How about yourself? Irma, get lost. How are you today, Mr. London? Very well indeed. Oh, by the way, I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize for what, uh, for what happened yesterday. That's all right, really. But nobody around here apologizes. Too troublesome. Yes, I believe I'd noticed that. However, you mustn't think I usually take advantage of weaker people. I must speak to you. It's important. What about? Oh, that proposition you've been handing out left and right to just anyone. A woman knows more. Two. One for me. Hundred. Up two hundred. Up two hundred. Mr. London, I told you to leave, huh? Don't you figure it's time? Your health. One moment, I'll settle my account. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Hundreds are open. That'll do. Cards, cough. Two. Aces. Straight. The lights. Who turned out the lights? Don't try it, friend. I believe I've had about enough. What do you say? Me too. Sure. Whatever's left out of my herd belongs to you now. Well, from the way he's walking out, you must have really destroyed him completely this time. You still love him, don't you? That's none of your business. What are you so worried about? 1,500 head of cattle means nothing to a man like Clinton. Anyway, in a couple of months, he'll be just as rich as he ever was, your ex-horse thief bastard. If he's a horse thief, how did you get where you are? Do you think I've forgotten your boat? It was handy for you, I must say, when it went to the bottom of the river with all your clients. Carl, confess. It looked bad, but it wasn't your fault. You can prove it. Confess. You'll get two years for negligence. I'll wait, honestly. We'll be able to live without fear. Do it for me. I can't take this anymore. Please do it, Carl. Kate, I'm overwhelmed. You are interested in me and in our future. I should confess it'd be the best thing. But I still have time for that. You can trust me, you know that. You know I'm nothing if not a man who keeps his promises. All right, Norton, I didn't mean to, to question you. Now you've got to proceed as per instructions. Then everything will be right. Are you sure, Norton? She mustn't suffer a minute. No suffering. Oh, one thing. Believe me, the sooner you do it, the better and easier.
Rosemary, you're too old and too sick. And this is the only way I can help you. given thanks unto the Lord. May the Lord then be with you at every moment. Go now in peace, and may this day end in happiness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Act with caution, my son. Remember. Thanks for the information. It'll be useful. Well, well, if it isn't our little churchgoer. He is the sweetest little old aller boy, isn't he? He needs to stay alone. He wants to pray. Father London, do you think you can find me a place next to the angels? I think I might need some help getting there. Hey, Father London? Help, help us, us, Father, Father London. London. <laughs> 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 hey. that you've been nothing but trouble for me. I think you'd better start realizing who the law is. I'm sorry, Sheriff. I would have preferred to wait for your help. <coughs> but you see, the good people of this town <coughs> wouldn't let me. Take care. I'm not about to allow anyone, not even a federal agent, to act up like that. Federal agent? Whatever do you mean, Sheriff? Jonathan Pinkerton of Lloyd's of London. Who are you? And what do you want around here? Who am I? You just said my name. What I want, I've already told you. It's that simple. Your credentials tell me one thing. What you say, tell me another. What you've been doing says still another. So what? So since you're a church-going man, you can just pray they all mean the same thing. Yesterday in the saloon, I was attacked. And here, today. At neither time nor place was Lady Law among those present. So I'm going to give some advice to you. The next time, just make sure you are there, and on my side. You threatening me now? No, I'm just telling you. You gave me your advice, now I'm giving you mine. So we're even. By the way, where were you when those gentlemen behind you were trying to drown me? At Clinton's ranch. He's been robbed of cattle again. Satisfied, boy? I'll see you. Hey, London. There's a couple of things we still have to get settled. Starting from today, whenever you feel like poking your nose in, you must get my okay. And you better just stop that ridiculous reward money story. You think the population here is 100% idiots? I don't. But maybe somebody else does. And I don't think anyone's proved that I'm the idiot either. Oh, yes. Did you catch the man who shot at us last night? Or have you been out of town chasing cattle rustlers, huh?
looks like a prior specimen. There's no way anyone can make a mistake with that one. That type of snake really carries a poison, doesn't it? That's right, Carl. I've only ever had three others to work on. I must say it's quite a stroke of luck, isn't it? Yeah, surely. I would say, not since I was a little boy years back. I haven't seen a snake of such magnificent dimensions since the Mississippi. What do you say we split it, Carl? Right down the middle. You don't mean the snake. I mean the money, the reward money. Fine with me, but how do we get it? That's the problem. It's simple. Just speak out. Yeah, speak out. Fine, perfect. But just how much? It would be enough to give a useful indication. To give a name. Only a name, you think? Possible, certainly. That's right. I'm sure a name will do it. It's easy for you. Eh? Of course, there's always Kate. Let me worry about her. For once, you got here almost on time, Sheriff. I don't mind telling you, I've never seen a faster gun in my life, Mr. London. Only I'm not sure I want that engraved on my tomb. Unfortunately, it's a question of life or death. Am I supposed to beg your pardon for being late? Hmm. Yes. And a very nice gesture it would be, too. Only I'd prefer it if you got here earlier next time. Why don't you give me a list of your enemies? It'd be a lot easier that way, or don't you agree? Maybe you know them better than I do. I believe you are the law in this town. You should know which of your fellow citizens has something to be settled with that law. At any rate, this time I can't make any accusations against you. I saw everything, or nearly. I was coming over here to get a shave. Poor Bob. He was a good man. I guess we'd better find a new barber. Mm. Yes, with a steadier hand.
Damn good fighters. Your men. Mr. London, I want to tell you I'm now completely ruined, wiped out. I have no more men, and now my herd consists of one bull and four cows. Then who were the men who were just in here trying to tear me in half? Really, I don't know. I'm too worried about just me. I'm afraid I can't spare any time to worry about you. No, I guess not. But you must admit, if you were in my place, you would have thought much the same. What brings you here to my house? Uh, I'm... You must admit that a person who breaks and enters isn't polite at all. I told you I'd come back. And since I didn't find anyone, I just came in on my own. Marvelous. You're clever, aren't you? Yes, that's what I mean. Careful, London. My house. I could kill you. I wouldn't be committing a crime at all. That's very true. But someone advised me to come take a look around here. Well, did you find anything? <laughs> Enough to send you to jail for the rest of your days. And by the way, since you keep emphasizing the fact that I'm here uninvited, don't overlook that there are at least two others here. And if they weren't your men, it looks like there was another robbery in the herd. <laughs> that story's getting a bit monotonous. Maybe for you, but I'm the one it's happening to. And what did you find that's so terribly incriminating? Oh, must be your brand. Is that right? Yes, means nothing, though. The day of the robbery, one of the three men stupidly left his horse at the bank. The brand was this, your brand, the brand your horses carry. Yes, the brand's mine, I've said so. But what does that have to do with anything? Listen to me. It took me two years to find this place and your ranch. Not everyone knows where it's located. Did you know that? So what? Are you trying to tell me that I was the one who left that horse? You're very intelligent. London, someone certainly must have told you that bandits for miles around have always tried to get a hold of my particular stock. And you don't know the reason, right? It'd be interesting to learn just why. You ought to have asked the sheriff, you know. His desk is full of reports I've sworn out for theft, robbery, rustling cattle. In two years, they've literally wiped me out. Well, I hope for your sake that it's true, and that among those complaints is one sworn out for that very horse. Two years back, I was robbed of a hundred head of horses. Right after that, about a thousand steers, the best. At any rate, it's all there on the sheriff's desk. Please feel free to check whenever you want. All right. I believe I shall. So it's robbery now, is it? But you're out of luck. A sheriff doesn't draw a lot of salary in this county. Not to let him leave the kind of money around that's worth risking your life for. Appearances point that way, I admit it. I want to show you what I have in my pocket. May I? All right, go ahead. Only don't try anything. Look at this. See, I had a reason for it. Alan Fields, United States federal agent. 
Assignment Arizona. I was pretty sure of it. Good enough. We can work together now. What did you think you'd find in there? I was looking for the robbery reports. Mr. Clinton says that he's filed many of them. I have to find a robber and a murderer. Now I'm getting closer. Or at least so I hope. Clinton, huh? Reports, hell. So now he says he's made reports on all kinds of robberies, eh? Robberies, hell! The ones he makes up so as not to pay the money he owes. I've had my eye on him for a long time. I'm waiting for the right minute. Unless you've got something, we can move on. Yeah. Quite a number of his men just ambushed and beat me. I heard all over. Well, well. Uh, so Clinton beat up a federal agent. Without knowing it. Anyway, now that I can count on your help, everything will be a lot easier. See you tomorrow. Right.
What's happened now? Another attempt on my life, this time in my room. We'd better do something. I think the moment we've been waiting for is now. Yes, but who do we make our move against? Norton. Norton? What did he do to you? Nothing particular. Because he couldn't, he's dead. He was bitten by a snake, but not one of his own. Why did they have to murder him? Hell, he was only a harmless lunatic, you know that. I suppose so. Maybe he decided to talk to me. The prize I'd offered was very attractive. He was a real mystery. There wasn't much he didn't know about snakes. Maybe he knew about whoever it was put him to use, too. My only hope right now is that someone has cleaned the room. I'm tired. Yeah, go sleep. I'll go over to Norton's and see what I can come up with. Maybe I'll get an idea of what to do next. Hope so. Yes, I'm positive. There's no doubt about it. It was him. You see, Sheriff, the last time I saw him, he was talking with Kate. He came in the place like some kind of animal. Didn't even give me the chance to ask what he wanted. He just jumped me, that's all. Are you sure you're right? A man's life depends on your testimony. A federal agent. You want to think it over? We could talk about it again this evening or tomorrow. Well? I'm sure, Sheriff, like I told you. But if you're positive it would do some good, I'd uh, be happy to take your advice. He really did land one on me. Just keep your mouth closed. Let me think a little about this. Go on home. Did you hear that, London? Yes, I heard it. But you're not about to believe it, I hope. When I got there, you were in Carl's office. You still had the gun in your hand and there were three shots missing. Carl had a hole in his forehead and looked like he'd been coming at you. Kate was three feet away. I already told you once. I found Kate dead there and Carl hanging from a beam in the ceiling. Boy, I hope it's true. I would really like to believe you. Oh, Lewis, don't you see that whoever it was has had his attacks on me fail one after another? Now he's doing his best to incriminate me, to tie it up legally. Or not quite. You could be right. You could have hit it, friend. Suppose we do this for now. Be a good boy. And I'll be happy to bring in anyone you please. Just tell me the name. I prefer to do it my way. Anyway, you know nothing about my investigations. That's true. You'll have to tell me a little. I've made a few of mine, too. But if I let you out of jail, there wouldn't be a living soul left in this town pretty soon. You're safer where you are. And the town is safer, too. 
Listen to what I tell you. Carl had many important friends, for that matter, so did Kate. They'll want to even up the score. See what I mean? If you say so. What'd you do to your hand, Lewis? Nothing. Yesterday I was out looking around and my horse took a spill. I don't even know why. Nothing serious. Sprain, that's all. Get him out. Bring him to that place and get a bullet in his head. Make sure you do it. Now. Sure, no trouble. But what do I need this for? You're pretty sure to run into somebody at the jail. This will make things quieter, easier to get him out. Gotcha, boss. Fine. Get going. Trouble, Sheriff. Go on, right. Keep your hands in sight. What's this about, Fred? Looking for a new line of work? Clinton sent me here for a little job he wanted done. I'm sorry, Sheriff. Now don't move, Gil. What do you want, Fred? My patience has a limit. That is your life, Sheriff. It ends right now. <laughs> Here you are, mister. Step outside, you'll find a horse. Good fast one. Let's go.
Pretty good, like I said. Let's get back. Good evening, Mr. Clinton. I'm looking for a job. My old one was getting too risky. For instance, I'd make a very good head wrangler. First rate. You say you've already got one, but you don't anymore. Sit down. Let's talk. If I won't bother asking you what happened to your hand, you'll just say your glass broke as you were toasting your latest cattle robber. I should have told you how impressed I was with that little thing that lets you fire a gun without making it go bang. I never would have believed it. Only I saw it being put to use, and through personal experience, now I have to believe it. Very intelligent plan, my congratulations. And, of course, now I'll be accused of murder, killing Lewis. And also of murdering the deputy. All extremely well thought out. However, I am still alive, and that's no good to you. I'm sure you must have guessed. I don't come from London. I'm a federal agent who's been assigned this case. You've got a hell of a lot of weight on your conscience, Clinton. You'll feel better if you get rid of some of it. Talk. I'm really not the man you want. Though it's true my men did set that ambush. The rest you can figure out. Come in, Lewis. We've been waiting for you. Then you're smarter than I thought. I'm afraid so. That's why you didn't bother seeing if I was really dead back in the office. Exactly. You forgot to tell your deputy not to breathe when he's making believe he's dead. When did you start suspecting me? When I first came to this town and saw you kill a man in cold blood. After he had given himself up. And when were you sure? <laughs> when I saw you come up those stairs. You're just bluffing, London. I'll show you the cards. Yours and mine. That way, you can see your own mistakes. To begin, you eliminated one by one all of your accomplices, and then tried to blame me. But all you did was help me. That nonsense in your office finally opened my eyes. I saw that there was one more trap I'd have to face. The last one. I had to do it. It was the only way I could finally force you. Force you to face me. Out in the open, and by yourself. And what was my biggest mistake? I would say not having me killed in your office. You overdid everything. Only why? That is your problem. My only mistake was getting involved with morons. Let's go. You can save the rest of your story for the judge. Just a minute, London. It's your word against mine. The word of an agent or the word of a sheriff. The word of a killer. Drop the gun. Sit quiet. And no fancy tricks, or I'll put a bullet through your forehead. You were late, but that's all right. Thanks just the same. Stand up. Thought you could pull it off, eh? I still think I can. Haven't given up yet? You're out of your mind. You're not in the same class I am, London. I was the smartest teller in the bank. I put together the smartest robber in the whole West. If only that bastard hadn't shot. I'm the smartest poker player, the smartest sheriff, the smartest everything. I do apologize, though. I admit you're a clever person who deserves a better traveling companion to go with him on his last trip than that idiot, Clinton. No, I must say, Mr. Pinkerton or Alan Fields or whatever, 
You shouldn't have to go like this, but there was nothing else I could do. Nerve is all that matters. I'm not in a rush. To be bitten, you only have to move or talk. The first man does, gets it. Personally, I'm willing to bet it'll be Clinton. He always was a rotten gambler. Then the other man gets it with my gun. Now, that's a much nicer way to go, isn't it? I'll be sorry, London, but nobody must ever try to go against me. Now you've found you're a fool, too. The hard way is too bad. Snakes are loose. Don't move, Kate. Help me, Lois. Shoot them. Quiet.
One thing, the best thing. Ah. <laughs> 